This appeal concerns a ship owner's obligations and responsibilities in relation to voyage passage planning. The appellants are the owners of the container ship CMA CGM Libra. The respondents are cargo owners. The ship grounded on a shoal outside of the Boyd Fairway shortly after leaving Xiamen, China, en route to Hong Kong. The Admiralty judge found that the vessel's defective pass passage plan was causative of the grounding, <coughs> and this involved a breach of the carrier's seaworthiness obligation under Article 3, Rule 1 of the Hague Rules. As this involved the owner's actionable fault, it followed that the cargo owners had a good defence to the owner's claim in general average. His decision was upheld by the Court of Appeal. The owners contend that the decisions of the courts below were wrong, that the vessel was not unseaworthy and or due diligence was exercised, and that any negligence in passage planning was a navigational fault, which is exempted under Article 4, Rule 2A of the Hague Rules. The main issues on the appeal are whether, as the owners contend, the carrier's obligation under the Hague Rules is subject to a category-based distinction between a vessel's quality of seaworthiness or navigability and the crew's act of navigating. It being said, there is a distinction between seaworthiness, which concerns the attributes and equipment of the vessel, and the navigation and management of the vessel, which concerns how the crew operates the vessel using those attributes and equipment. A further and related issue arises in relation to the obligation of due diligence. It is the owner's case that so long as the carrier has equipped the vessel with all that is necessary for her to be safely navigated, including a competent crew, then the crew's failure to navigate the vessel safely is not a lack of due diligence by the carrier. The judgment is given by myself, Lord Hamblin, with whose judgment Lord Reed, Lord Briggs, Lady Arden and Lord Leggett agree. The first issue, did the defective passage plan render the vessel unseaworthy for the purposes of Article 3, Rule 1 of the Hague Rules? The court holds that the carrier's obligation under the Hague Rules is not subject to a category-based distinction between the vessel's quality of seaworthiness or navigability and the crew's act of navigating. In particular, first, on the proper interpretation of the Hague Rules, the Article 4, Rule 2 exceptions of act, neglect or default in the navigation or management of the vessel cannot be relied upon in relation to a causative breach of the carrier's obligation to exercise due diligence to make the vessel seaworthy. Secondly, if the vessel is unseaworthy, it makes no difference whether negligent navigation or management is the cause of the unseaworthiness or is itself the unseaworthiness. Thirdly, the concept of unseaworthiness is not subject to an attribute threshold, requiring that there be an attribute of the vessel which threatens the safety of the vessel or her cargo. Fourthly, save for exceptional cases at the boundaries of seaworthiness, the well-established prudent donor test, namely whether a prudent donor would have required the relevant defect to be made good before setting the vessel to sea, had he known of it, is an appropriate test of seaworthiness, well suited to adapt to differing and changing standards. Fifthly, the fact that a defect is remediable may mean that a vessel is not unseaworthy, but whether or not it does so is likely to depend on whether it would be reasonably expected to be put right before any danger to vessel or cargo arose. Sixthly, given the essential importance of passage planning for the safety of navigation, applying the prudent donor test, a vessel is likely to be unseaworthy as she begins her voyage without a passage plan, or she does so with a defective passage plan which endangers the safety of the vessel. Seventhly, the fact that the defective passage plan involves neglect or default in the navigation of the ship within the Article 4 Rule 2A exception is no defence to a claim for loss or damage caused by the unseaworthiness. The second issue, did the failure of the master and second officer to exercise reasonable skill and care when preparing the passage plan constitute want of due diligence on the part of the carrier for the purposes of Article 3, Rule 2 of the Hague Rules. The court holds that the crew's failure to navigate the ship safely is capable of constituting a lack of due diligence by the carrier. It makes no difference that the delegated task of making the vessel seaworthy involves navigation. In particular, first, the obligation on the carrier to exercise due diligence to make the vessel seaworthy 
requires that due diligence be exercised in the work of making the vessel seaworthy, regardless of who is engaged to carry out that task. Secondly, the carrier may not be liable for lack of due diligence, which occurs before he has responsibility for the vessel, or for lack of due diligence, which occurs before he has responsibility for the cargo. The carrier may nevertheless be liable if a defect or danger will be reasonably discoverable by the exercise of due diligence once the vessel or cargo has come within his control. Thirdly, the carrier is liable for a failure to exercise due diligence by the master and deck officer of his vessel in the preparation of a passage plan for the vessel's voyage. The fact that navigation is responsibility of the master and involves the exercise by the master and deck officers of their specialist skill and judgment makes no difference. Fourthly, the carrier's seaworthiness obligation in relation to passage planning is not limited to providing a proper system for such planning. In summary, the judge directed himself properly in law and the findings he made amply support the conclusion he reached that the defective passage plan involved a want of due diligence to make the vessel seaworthy. The Supreme Court therefore unanimously dismisses the appeal.